some interesting coloration on them. I don't know if you can see it there, but the peas are kind of half white, half brown. So this variety is called Oak. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an amazing day. It is Thursday, August 17th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're going to do a little fall planting. We're going to plant two varieties of cow peas that I bet you've never heard of before. And after we plant those, probably need to harvest these cucumbers here. So a couple weeks ago, we did a video talking about seven fail-proof warm season veggies that you can replant again in the fall. And on that list was climbing beans or climbing cow peas. And on that video, I told you that we were going to be planting some of those Tennessee purple peas on our arch panel trellis here, a nice climbing cow pea that we grew last year. I told you that we were waiting on our sunflowers to get a little taller here so our climbing peas don't strangle those sunflowers. And we are going to plant those here on both sides of this arch panel trellis, but we're not going to do it today. I need to do a little cleanup here before we plant those. Need to go ahead and harvest all these pumpkins and stuff. We'll probably do that on one of the next couple videos. Get all those pumpkins harvested, get this cleaned up, and then we can plant those here. So no Tennessee purple peas today, but when I was going through my seed stash, getting ready for that last video when we planted all those cool season veggies in the greenhouse, I found these two varieties here, two cow pea varieties that I've never grown before. And I think these are pretty rare because you can't find a whole lot online about these. So the first one we have here is called Check Bay Peas, and I'm almost 100% certain these came from Cajun Bee when we took a visit over there last summer. I think he actually had some of those growing out there in his garden. I don't think this is a climbing variety. I think this is a more of a bush variety. The peas are pretty small on it. Reminds me a lot of a Dixie Lee Crowder pea of a darker cow pea there but i remember him saying a lot of good things about them so we're going to give those a try and then we have these right here which have some interesting coloration on them i don't know if you can see it there but the peas are kind of half white half brown so this variety is called ozark razorback cow pea it was sent to us by john mays and he says it's a climbing variety a really good producer and one of the best tasting cow peas out there in his opinion so I did a little Google search on these Ozark Razorback cow peas. Didn't find a whole lot. Found a couple blogs, people talking about they had grown them. It seems like maybe Baker Creek carried this variety at some point, but they don't carry it anymore. So, you know, seems like it's pretty rare cow pea. We're going to see just how good it is. And I think this no-till plot right here is going to be the perfect spot to try some of these cow pea varieties that we've never grown before. Got a little bit of space right here between these cucumbers and sweet potatoes. And then we've also got more space right here. Since we've already got this trellis system up here left over from our indeterminate tomatoes, gonna make it really easy to grow some climbing cow peas right here. Once they get up and going, we'll just hang some of that Hortanova trellis from the conduit, much like we did with these cucumbers. So I've already been doing a little bit of planning and mapping as far as just trying to figure out what plots are going to be getting cool season veggies this fall and winter and which plots are going to be getting cool season cover crops and getting grazed by the chickens. Now in this plot we've got those sweet potatoes back there and they're at least another month out before we need to dig those. I ran the numbers the other day, figured out when I planted them, looked at the maturity date for that Orleans variety and I think we need to dig those around mid-September or so. So those are still going to be here for a little while. These cucumbers are still looking awesome. I think they're going to be here for a little while as well. That's why we've chosen this plot to plant those peas as opposed to another plot that we're going to be putting something else in soon. Now we've already got drip tape buried where our two rows of peas are going to go. That drip tape is left over from the tomatoes we had here back in the spring and early summer. So we don't have to worry about setting up any irrigation. I think the only thing I am going to do is try to kind of rake up these rows a little bit here, make my hill a little more even. We've got just some spotty mounds there where we healed those tomatoes. So I'm gonna take my rake and kind of even this out a little bit, make me a nice little mound for planting. 
all right so it sure is nice just to be able to do everything you need to do with one tool we don't need to bring a bunch of stuff from the barn out here to this garden plot we did everything we need to do with the old trusty garden rake now i usually don't plant cow peas or field peas on a hill like this but i wanted to be sure i wasn't getting into my drip tape when i was making a little plant furrow and the only way i knew to not get into it would be to either pull it up and put it back down or to make a hill like we did here. So we raked up a hill, smoothed it out a little bit, and then I just turned the old garden rake on its side and made me a nice little planting furrow. So we've got that done right here under this conduit where we'll put up a trellis at some point. And then we did the same thing right over there where the other row of tomatoes was. And look who it is, it's the garden advisory committee. They're Walking around making sure we're doing all the right things around here, making sure we're not breaking any rules. Just keep an eye on things. Now cow peas are legumes, which means they'll fix their own nitrogen given there are the right bacteria in the soil for them to do so. They typically don't need a lot of nutrients. They can grow in pretty poor soils and they're pretty drought tolerant too. So we won't be fertilizing these a whole lot. I am gonna put just a little bit of coop grow down as a pre-plant fertilizer. I found this in my barn fridge, some inoculant here, but it's old, it's a year or two old. I don't know if it's still any good anymore, but we're gonna put it down just in case it is. So we'll put a little bit of coop grow down here, not a whole lot, just an entrance policy. We already know from those cucumbers that this soil here is pretty fertile, so just a light sprinkle. And then we'll sprinkle some of this old inoculant in our planting furrow here. This is what gives those peas the bacteria they need to fix their own nitrogen. Hopefully this stuff is still active. And then we'll start getting some seeds down. So these are those Ozark Razorback peas. You can see the brown and white color on those. I don't have a ton of them, but I think I've got enough here to plant this 30 foot row. So I'm gonna try to just spread them out a little bit. That way we get a nice full row probably put the seeds i don't know four inches apart or so and if we have some left over by the time we get to the end of the row we'll come back and kind of fill in some of the gaps a little bit all right so those actually more seeds in that little baggie than i thought i was actually able to plant them pretty thick like i like to plant them usually got the seeds just a couple inches apart there now we're just going to take our garden rake again we're just going to close up that furrow just like that and then we'll tamp it down, get some good seed to soil contact there. Now we'll do the exact same thing with our Chack Bay peas here. I've got more of these, so I'm going to plant them pretty thick just to make sure I get a nice stand. We've already put down our coop grow and our inoculants. All we got to do here is just plant, cover them up. And just like that, we've got two rows of peas planted. Hopefully those germinate well for us, even though we've had those seeds for a while. I am going to wait to put up my Horta Nova trellis on those Razorback peas, wait to see if they actually germinate or not. Then we'll run our trellis through that conduit there, let it hang down so they can have something to climb on. Right here with these Chack Bay peas, I'm going to have to keep an eye on these sweet potato plants. Man, these things are sprawling all over the place. I've been trying not to cut them earlier when I was getting this row mounted up and ready to plant. I used my rake and kind of pushed them back that way a little bit. So I'll probably have to do that a few times over the next month or so until we dig these rascals. So I'm excited to see how those do, excited to see how they taste. Now y'all know I'm not a big heirloom guy, but there are a couple things I really like trying a bunch of different heirloom varieties. One of those being okri and one of those being cow peas or field peas. And those two things happen to grow very, very well in this sauna we call South Georgia. And now, as promised, we're gonna see if we can get enough cucumbers here to make a few jars of pickles. We've been getting a good bit off this little Corinto stretch right here. Our pickles down there on the end are just now starting to produce for us, but I think we're in a really good production mode right now where we'll have enough from each harvest to make some pickles. Now, one question we always get is, how do you keep your pickles from being soggy? How do you keep them crisp in the jars after you water bath and preserve them all that we have a really good recipe on our website at lazydogfarm.com but one thing that's not on that recipe a little top secret tip i'll give you pick your pickles in a dog's bucket and they'll stay a lot more crisp that way 
So I feel like I just picked these Corintos here a couple days ago, but man, these things are loaded again. This is a really, really good producing variety. Might have a few in there that have gotten too big. Might have to go to the chickens. Been trying to pick them about that size right there. It's a good pickle slicing size there. That one right there, probably too big to cut up and put in a pickle jar. All right, so I picked those clean, and that's about what we've been getting every few days just from that little 10-foot stretch of Corinto cucumbers. Just absolutely amazing production from those. Did have three there. They're a little too big for my liking. They don't have to go far. We'll give them to the chickens right there. Now, there are a lot of good slicing cucumber varieties out there, but I've yet to find one that is as productive as Corinto, as you can see there, just off a little 10-foot stretch. We're getting loads and loads of cucumbers. Now, a lot of people balk when they see the price of the Corinto seeds. Yeah, they're pretty pricey, but I promise you, once you grow them, you will feel like it was worth the investment. Now, for our pickles here, these have been a little slower to start producing than those Corintos have. And we didn't get all our seeds germinated here. Hard to believe this is only two plants. We only had two seeds germinate in this little 10 foot stretch here, but that's been enough. We've got almost complete coverage on the Horta Nova trellis. So I noticed earlier, we're starting to finally get some pickles in here. There's a nice looking pickle right there, another one right there. So these things will probably be giving us buckets here for too long. Not sure if this is the Supremo variety, the Excelsior variety, or one plant of each. I just used some leftover seeds I had down there and I don't know which one's germinated. All right, so not getting bumper harvest yet from our pickles, just five or six nice ones there, but I'm sure there will be more to come. And upon further inspection here, taking a closer look, I think this is the Excelsior variety. All I'm seeing is female flowers here, no male flowers. Excelsior is a parthenocarpic and gynoecious variety so it doesn't require pollination and it makes all female flowers that would make sense given what we're seeing here so our peas are planted our pickles are harvested and i think that's going to do it for us in the garden this afternoon if by some small chance you have ever grown the ozark razorback or the chack bay cow pea variety let me know about it in the comments below so I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. And also go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where you can find that pickle recipe and some of that Coop Grow fertilizer that we used earlier. And if you want to see some other neat cow peas, those Tennessee purple peas we were talking about earlier, check out this video right here. We'll show you our grow out and harvest from last year and how beautiful those peas are. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.